All right, gentlemen, the uh, the brother-in-law, King Crow, he's uh, he's pulled through once again. Um, found a smoking deal here on this uh, Craftsman Kohler overhead valve, 7.25 uh, horsepower rated uh, lawnmower. So nothing super fancy about this one. It's just, you know, pull and go. Um, it's not direct drive or, or uh, self-driven, whatever, propelled, nothing like that. Um, however, uh, Kijiji free, free. Can you believe it? Free. It uh, it pulls over. Um, you know, it's all good. You can hear the compression in there. Uh, more than likely, like everybody else, over the winter time, quite obviously, uh, stored the sucker outside, and the carburetor is probably absolutely plugged full of schmoo. So what I'm gonna do? Um, I'm gonna pull the carb off. Uh, do a little dis disassembly video on that and uh, we'll see if we can't get this thing running um, and back on the Kijiji market again turn a profit for some beer. So we've had to uh, dig a little further deeper onto this one um, you know interesting system trying to you know simplify things maybe with uh, the choke and you know emissions and all that kind of stuff um, uh, but what we've got here is, is some kind of a thermally actuated um, choke system over here on get my hand out of the way on this side um, so you know attached to the um, exhaust so once it gets hot enough you know the choke will shut off so when it's cold um, it should be on and then there's this other uh, you know it's a basically another vac vacuum actuated system here off of this plunger um, that opens the, the choke up as well so it's kind of got two chokes one to uh, um, you know, open up once uh, uh, it's hot, and then another one, sort of a backup, based on the on the vacuum as well. So if it revs up, it's going to open, open up or rev up. I don't know. Anyways, it, uh, so I don't know. We'll have to look at that once it's once it's operating, just to see how well that system works. But I could see that uh, you know being a, a bit of an issue. I don't know. Not something to be said about having just a straight on, uh, you know, manual choke that you you turn off and on yourself, but. Whatever, um, anyways, so yeah, we'll continue to uh, take the um, gas line off here, get that plugged up, and then we'll get it on the workbench and, uh, and have a look. So here we go, we've got the, uh, the carburetor off, um, you know, drain the gas out of it. It's, uh, let's see, it's a, it's a Kohler carburetor. Um, yeah, I don't know, I mean, um, Boy, there were there was some sort of show you the gas in there. It's uh, it looks like piss after a night of drinking. It's pretty nasty. Um, so, gone and uh, I don't know. I'm just loving this impact right now. But anyway, so just uh, carry on. The mess here. I thought we got most of the gas. A little bit of gas left in there. Um, one of the first things to always look for in these things these uh, these floats they just end up sticking. Um, you know, probably a little bit of water in there. You can see there's some some rust um, has accumulated. So we'll go ahead. Um, I'm gonna I'll take this vacuum line off here. It uh, yeah, interesting little design on this with that vacuum to actuate that other half of the the mechanism. But um, you know, I don't know. At a glance, it looks okay. It's not super nasty. Um, so you take the pin out, and I just gotta watch because that little plunger in there. If you lose that guy, boy, you'll be up the creek trying to figure out different part numbers. Um, so yeah, we'll go ahead. We'll uh, we'll probably um, try and blow this out with the compressor. Um, the thing to be careful though with with a compressor blowing it out is just sometimes there can be other little um, pieces in amongst the uh, the carb, and uh, you don't want to blast something out um, accidentally. Um, yeah, sometimes inside, uh, there isn't in this one, but sometimes inside the, uh, the little plunger, um, there can be another rubber stop mechanism in there, so you just gotta watch out that. So we'll go ahead, we'll take the screwdriver, we'll uh, we'll remove the jet, uh, make sure that's not blocked there, and just kind of check all the ports, make sure everything's getting fuel everywhere. Um, give it a good clean, and then, um, yeah, reassembly and, you know, get stuff put back together here, so. All right, so we've got the uh, the carbs been uh, cleaned. Uh, went through it and cleaned it, and blew it out. Um, drain the last of the, the fuel out. Man, that's just nasty, party. Probably part of the problem why it's not running right. But th this, I tell you, this this choke on this thing. I mean, it's a good idea, you know, taken from you know uh, vehicles. You know, they got sort of that that choke spring in there, right? Opens and closes the choke. 
Um, you can see it, it twists this, right? And opens and closes the choke. But, you know, it, it was binding on this thing. So I put a little WD-40 on there. Hopefully it doesn't catch fire when we, when we uh, fire it up. But, um, you know, if you look, I don't know if you can exactly see it on the video here. Anyways, but it comes out of this thing at a freaking angle. And uh, no wonder why it's binding. I mean, you know, kind of, you know, over-engineered, under-implemented. Um, really kind of hokey. It's probably going to be a problem forever. So more than likely, um, I don't know, if this were going to be mine and I was going to keep it, um, I would just figure out some kind of a manual choke on here. Um, you know, just hardwire a little wire onto it and, you know, be able to open and close it, uh, make it work like that. Once they're warmed up, they're good to go, but boy, this thing, it's got a high chance of failure. Starts closed, may never open on you. And so if it doesn't open on you, it may never run. Um, anyways, yeah, so we'll, we'll put her back together, get some clean fuel in it and, uh, uh give it a whirl, see how long she she runs where it'll start, but um, the question is whether or not that choke will open up and, and allow it to uh, breathe and rip and cut grass, so we'll see.